This is Debbie Dashinger inviting you to join me and some amazing presenters aboard the Galactic Origin Celebrity Cruise to the Yucatan in December. Go to D-E-B-B-I, D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R dot com slash cruise. Welcome to the award-winning Dare to Dream podcast with Debbie Dashinger, covering metaphysics, ETs, shamanism, and channeling. Here you will find spiritual inspiration from today's thought leaders, along with cutting-edge insights from our interstellar brothers and sisters and ancient shamanic wisdom. Now, here's a new episode of Dare to Dream with your host, Debbie Dashinger. Hello, beautiful people. My light workers out there, today I am going to be speaking with Antonia M. Lawrence, who's a quantum healer, also dragon medicine facilitator, cosmic channel, and wealth activator. The beautiful Antonia will offer light language channeling and some activations in today's show, so you definitely want to stay until the end. This show has won three Talk Positive Change Awards, also Welt Magazine named Dare to Dream, one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year, high ranking on Apple Podcasts under Self-Improvement, and also won the COVR Award for Best Podcast Show. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane Here and Access Consciousness. They do energy work. You can become a facilitator or take a class. Join them at Dr. Dane Here, H E E R dot com. If you would like to know what your galactic ancestry is, unlock your cosmic potential with a free starseed report and video, my gift to you, you can explore 19 different star seeds in a very captivating video and uncover your galactic origins in a detailed report. Don't miss this chance to find out and to connect with your star lineage. You can go to debbie-dashinger.com slash starseed. It's D-E-B-B-I, D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash Starseed. And speaking of starseeds, <laughs> this woman that I'm about to bring on the show is going to be appearing with me and several other phenomenal people, starseeds. And we are talking on October 5th about Lyra, 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 all things Lyra. We are participating in the Lyran conference. And so I wanted to get to know her better. She's got a gorgeous presence. So my guest today is Antonia Lawrence, who's a transformative healer and a spiritual guide whose deep rooted connection to her cultural heritage fuels her extraordinary abilities. A multidimensional channel, she seamlessly blends quantum healing, psychic insights, shamanic practices, sound therapy, and somatic movement to facilitate profound holistic transformation. Antonia's mission is to empower individuals to ascend to their highest potential. You can join her on a journey of self-discovery and spiritual enlightenment. You can learn more at Antonia M. Lawrence, L-A-W-R-E-N-C-E dot com. And with that, I welcome Antonia to Dare to Dream. It's so good to meet you. Hello, hello. Thank hello. you, Debbie. Thank you, Dare to Dream, mm -hmm. for having me today. I am truly honored to be here and so excited to see what comes through and what information we get to share with the world. And I'm so excited about the conference that's coming up in being amongst so many other amazing speakers and we get to play in the galactic realms and talk all about the Lyran Council and the Lyran Energy. And so, so excited to be here and thank you again for having me. Yes, to all of that. I loved in your bio, Antonia, where it says you're a healer and a guide with deep rooted connection to your cultural heritage. What is your cultural heritage? Thank you for asking. Well, 
I am a Native American, so my family is very indigenous to the land, and we are a part of the Natchez, Natchez tribe out of Natchez, Mississippi, as well as that extends out into the Cherokee and other Native tribes throughout my um, maternal lineage. And my father's lineage also has a lot of um, deep roots to Haiti and so many different cultural experiences that um, I experienced growing up in New Orleans, Louisiana, which is a melting gumbo pot of magic mysticism. So yes. it was something that I grew up all around and it called me and I answered the call in <laughs> To be able to backtrack a lot of my roots from my ancestors being shamanic healers and medicine women and farmers and herbalists. And it just connected me deeper into my own inner wisdom. And it brought everything to life that I had so many questions about. Mm -hmm. And so I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. So I certainly understand the shamanic part. Was there also some magic in your family? I don't know why, you know, I just go with the download when I get it. Definitely. Um, again, growing up in New Orleans, a lot of my family experienced working with magic, even from a secret aspect where, you know, Oftentimes in culture, you have to kind of hide behind a mask when you're practicing certain rituals and, and magic because you're in fear of what others may say, or you may have been, you know, ostracized or cast out for doing the work. And for a lot of my lineage, they, you know, wasn't able to continue in their gifts because of who they were and them standing in their power. So for so for my family on both sides of, of my lineage, definitely had experience with magic and rituals and ceremony. And to this day, I just have this deep reverence for the occult, the esoteric, the mystical, the mysticism and magic energy, because this is truly what connects us to the cosmos. This is truly what uh, connects us to our inner being and our inner knowing and using the elements that are all around us, air, fire, water, earth to transcend and transmute so much energy is truly what magic and alchemy is all about. Mm-hmm. And you were just saying that how it extends out into the cosmos. Do you know what your galactic lineage is? Are you aware of where your soul has been and where it shows to live or incarnate? Yes. You know, I have a great story that I am definitely proud of. I am actually a cosmic and star mother. So I was one of those beings that was here before creation and helping to create creation. And I also have um, star lineage to the Lyran family, as well as Sirius B. And um, as far as I know, those are the ones that I'm most familiar with, as well as being a part of the, the Dragon High Council, as well as the Galactic Council of of all. So I'm sure there's more <laughs> that that I can, you know, tap more into and expound on, but those are the ones that um that comes through for me the most and where I'm most connected to. And I'm looking to and excited to continue to unweave and unravel the um the mystery of it all. Yeah, I've never heard that before, what you just shared about being like a, a birthing mother, if you will, for a lot of creation. How did you find that out? For me, it was um, a lot of self-reflecting and self-realizations and also doing a few Akashic journeys and doing a lot of Akashic sessions and Actually, one of the um, facilitators for the Lyra Console, Flo Karuna, a brother of mine, we actually um, expounded and, and delved deep into this aspect, and we were kind of able to unlock some of um, some of these things as well. So, 
going through the Akash definitely helps expand your knowledge and it gives you this insight of who you are, where you originated from, and what you're even here to do for your soul's mission in this lifetime. And for me, that's exactly what we're doing with our event coming up on October 5th. Yeah, a hundred percent. I agree with you, Antonia. You know, when I had my first Akashic Record Galactic reading, it changed my life. There was so many pieces of who I was that it, it was impossible that anybody of all the options out in the galaxy, that they would have chosen what they did to say, and you're still on that path because it was exactly what I'm doing, how I'm being. And I even look sometimes this year in particular, I've been finding out some of the traumas that I've had. And interestingly enough, they were repeated in this life, but it took me all this time to realize, oh, these are akin to what happened when our planet was destroyed in Lyra. And so I'm piecing these things together. And I feel like even on a healing level, they're deeper. On a being level, they're deeper. On a purpose level, they're deeper. So I, yeah. I get it. What you're saying is very game changing. And I love that you worked with Flo because, you know, he's a brother. He's so beautiful, a uh, real heart based guy. Yeah. Yeah. And love him for life to life. And so excited that we get to meet in this lifetime and this reality. And he's able to facilitate and bring us all together because we all once was a part of, you know, this planet and this uh, star nation doing what we're doing now. And the fact that we get to live in this reality, doing the same thing is, you know, out of this world, but it's in this world at the same time, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, I want to know more about what you do uh, to help people heal. Cause I was really interested this soup, right? And I get it. A lot of healers are like that. Um, some, a lot of them were passed down to you naturally. So you, some, you had a study, some came naturally to you, plus you channel. So when you're working, Antonia, with a group or with a client, you know, you pick, can you give an example using your multidimensional channeling with the quantum healing, with the psychic insights, the shamanic practices, the sound therapy, and the somatic movement how does that manifest and um, maybe give an example of working with somebody or a group and what that experience is like to receive yeah um that's a powerful question and for me what's what's coming through to share right now is from an aspect of embodiment and awakening the voice and so generally, a lot of times, as you may know, we may experience trauma and so many lived experience here that we were told to be small or we were told to minimize, minimize our voice and our truth. And a lot of us become mild or even meek or afraid to speak up for something so similar as you ordered a coffee and your order is wrong. And there's something in you where you know, this isn't what I wanted. I want to return it, but you are afraid or there's some contraction in you that doesn't even want to say, hey, I actually ordered this instead. And what oftentimes happen is using the psychic abilities and the intuition, you kind of begin to unlock and discover what's coming through for this individual client, why they are afraid to use their voice or why they are afraid to speak up. And oftentimes you can land on they are not embodied and grounded or even anchored into their power. And why are they not anchored into their power? Well, there may have been an experience when they were maybe four or 14 that comes through that made them hide in the corner and did not recognize who they were. Or maybe it's the aspect where they didn't have anyone in their family that supported their gifts or who they were. So in order for them to go on this path of discovery, self-discovery, they were um, instead 
following other practices and principles that, you know, their family may have put on them. So doing that analogy of understanding where the root cause comes from with, you know, channeling and intuition, you can begin to unlock the voice and the wisdom with the quantum energy and the quantum technology to help them clear any blockages that may be within their throat, right? Which is where we are speaking from. And the throat is is the vocal channel, right? Where we are the expression. However, there may be the vocal aspects from the root, right? From maybe trauma that is blocked off that also needs to be cleared. Or there could be some self-confidence issue that um, could be um, cut off from not only this lifetime experiences, but other lifetime experiences, right? When we talk about the Akashic and how a lot of our experiences and patterns that we do here could be repeated things that we've done and was never cleared up. So using quantum energy, what I like to call quantum technology, you begin to access the genome within you, your DNA, and you can begin to recode and basically realign these energy bodies, not just from a physical layer in your aura, right? But also your etheric bodies and, and other layers of your soul and yourself that we may not be able to access just with um, channeling a message. So pairing that as well as using you know, the shamanic drumming or taking them through a hypnosis journey where they can actually unlock and pull out their own wisdom. Because I'm a firm believer that we are all gifted and we all can trust the innate wisdom within ourselves. So going through a sh shamanic or a hypnosis journey can allow you to become the healer can allow you to become the wisdom keeper of your own knowledge and you begin to discover as a client, wow, I do remember that this happened. And now that this has come up and we've recognized where this, um, where this root is, now we get to weave all of these energies together to kind of shift you out of that reality and welcoming you into a new timeline where you get to choose. And, and that's the most important part for me is the choosing because I, I feel like oftentimes as healers and channelers, we know how expansive things can be. So we automatically want to anchor this person here and drop them in this to this new timeline and this new reality, but they may not even be ready for that. Right. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, I like to invite the client to ask, is this a new contract or is this a new reality and timeline that you are willing to live? Because if you energetically is, are not ready to jump, then there's going to also be some contraction there or there also may be some glitches when you jump into this new reality and you're not mentally or even physically ready to experience this timeline because as you know once you jump into a new reality or timeline there's going to be things that are not of alignment that's going to fall away and things may crumble and for some people it may be like oh my god this isn't working but it actually is working because now you are being required to resonate on a frequency level into this new energetic reality that you are desiring to call in. So it's all about choice and being willing to welcome this energy and welcome the divinity into your own life and choosing your own sovereignty. Yeah, it was great examples. And <clears throat> I was sort of laughing over here because I recently went through an experience like the first example you gave, where I went out to dinner and we ordered and then the waiter um, put down a plate in front of my partner and it was lamb chops. And my partner said, excuse me, I ordered the lamb shank. And the, the waiter actually argued with him. It was like super uncomfortable when it happened. He said, no, you ordered the lamb chop. Like <laughs> I was sitting right there. I was a witness. And it was a moment. Like I literally was sitting there going, how is this going to go? I got to be honest. I was ready to crumble. I was ready to go just, 
eat the lamb chops, yeah. you know? I didn't know how it was going to go, but I was so proud. Like my partner totally didn't back down and just went, it's not what I said. And he just yeah. held on, you know, sometimes silence is so powerful yeah. to not engage. And so we, after he spoke his truth, yeah, the guy just picked up the plate and went back and brought him back the correct thing. But yeah, there's everything from that moment, which may seem very small or grand to some people, to very large, how it plays out singing your song in this life, you know, speaking your truth and being you. I mean, embodying you, sovereignty is so important. And <clears throat> yeah, I also really appreciate what you're saying to not push somebody somewhere and they may not energetically be prepared for it, that you allow them, you help with the healing work and then allow them to navigate where that's going to go for right now. Yeah. You know, because we all have options and we all have choice and that's a part of owning your sovereignty, which is freedom. Right. And so, yeah. you know, maybe it's not the full expansion. Maybe it's just a gradual step in approach. But oftentimes we can kind of thrust someone into an experience energetically that they may not be ready for, or they may not even have a lot of the spiritual tools mm. to support them yeah. when you aren't available for them. So it's truly about journeying with them. And that's truly what shamanic journeying and, and practices is all about, is being able to assist and help you journey along um this this transition and the transmutation of of your life and where it is that you want to go next yeah what about the uh dragon technology i'm very fascinated i'm also obsessed with dragons so oh <laughs> uh, what is yeah. your experience connecting to light consciousness love and wealth codes using dragon technology like yeah. how do those intersect yeah thank you for that you know Oh, dragon. It's so interesting to say that because they're like, yes, I'm here now. And so they're just like swarming all around me to, to pour out some energetic support. But dragon energy is so magical, but also light and very um, ethereal. And it also is very grounding, nurturing. And what I've learned with working with dragons, and by the way, I had this big dragon tattoo when I went to Bali last year. So I felt like it was my official initiation a little <laughs> bit, <laughs> but, um, but, but dragon energy began to come to me more heavily with over the last three or four years. And I began to work with them on a deeper level to begin to understand their wisdom and their medicine mm -hmm. and the dragon energy again, is an energy that helps awaken your life force it helps awaken what the dragons and i like to call the golden dragon light body which mm. is truly you being in this um aura field of just just golden iridescent light of power you're standing in your truth you're owning your your wealth you're owning your voice and it is truly you coming in alignment with yourself in all it is that you are here to do for your soul's mission in this lifetime. So using dragon technology, you get to use elements of the earth, right? So there's earth dragons. There are um, fourth dimensional dragons. There are fifth dimensional dragons, 12 dimensional dragons. You know, there's dragons of cosmos and god there are certain dragons that work with a lot of the archangels as supportive energy to help transmute and clear so mm -hmm. dragons can also bring in multi-dimensional codes of wealth and abundance and the misconception about dragons for not any of any of us who's listening today though right but the misconceptions about dragons is that you know, they are destroyers and they are, you know, demonic in a way, but they are transmuters, right? And only certain um, dragons are actually the ones that are blowing the fire and using this destroyer energy. But what it is, is that it is 
is destroying anything and everything that is not of its highest frequency. And dragons are here to keep things in alignment. Dragons are here to keep things in balance mm -hmm. because they sit underneath the earth and they're the ones that are protecting us and holding us and, and, and keeping the frequency um, that we're here walking in earth mm -hmm. on at the highest capacity. So dragons are our allies. Mm -hmm. They are our brothers and sisters mm -hmm. and they're so fun. They want to play, right? They want you to have these grand experiences and um, they want you to be able to trust them in a way where you're not afraid, you're not timid, but you you welcome them into your experience and they can literally help shift you to these quantum realms as well because they can, kept, they can help carry you higher, right? And they also have this energetic frequency, especially the earth dragons, where they can keep you grounded and rooted. So it's a culmination of working with various different dragon energy to do whatever it is that you want to do in this time of this transmute, transform, align to higher wealth um, frequencies of abundance or healing. It's so much more that you can do with dragons and using dragon technology. How did they come to you? How did you meet the dragons and in what form and what relationship? Yeah, great question. Um, originally, unaware and unconsciously they were coming to me when I was a kid because I was so into the bigness of the dragons and also I would see like different cartoons and they were so like you know cute and then there was also some ones that uh that looked kind of crazy but weird and they but they were accepting of you know these different mystical stories and I remember about four years ago, I went into a meditation and, well, let me, let me go back actually before that. I actually did a plant medicine ceremony and I went to ayahuasca, grandma Aya. And in this ceremony, the next day we ended up doing a plant medicine called Changa. And this experience, I can still probably transmuted and translated for you front to back because it was that grand. I remember every single detail. And I remember the next morning we go through Changa and what I like to ask you, I've never heard of that. And I've done a lot of plant medicine is Changa anything like San Pedro Huachuma or is it very different? Um, I'm not actually sure about that one, but what I'm, what I'm feeling intuitively is that it's similar. Um, but for for Changa, it's something that we would say it shows you who God is within you. And I feel like all plant medicine, you know, gives you that reality, right? And so you use this medicine and you begin to experience and explore these realms and you begin to see what God is or who God is in your essence, in your form. And I'll never forget, I was laying down and this, you know, after, you know, ingesting the medicine, because you actually, it's something that you smoke, but you don't really inhale it. So you go through this whole trance experience. And so you kind of fall back like, whoa, right? Oh, so that's, it sounds like Bufo. Yeah, it, it does. Is it, it, is it yeah. toad? that you're smoking no, it's, it's not told wow um it's not told but mm. it's it's um i don't want to call it tobacco but it's some type of resin yeah okay. some type of resin mm. very interesting i never heard of it either but when it was offered i was like hey why not we're here right you might as well go through the whole experience full on go with it so yeah so i awaken to this energy and in this trans like state i begin to see myself as a yellow dragon, a red dragon, an orange dragon. And I begin to transform into all of these different colors of dragons until the end, I became this big white cosmic dragon. And I'm just like, whoa, like experiencing this. And that is also the same day that I awakened a part of my trance channeling where I begin to dance in trance, channeling this dragon energy 
it was a whole out of body experience. And that was the first experience that I had in my body of what a dragon energy felt like, but also I was able to see the dragon energy. And from there, the introductions and the, the connections begin to continue to unfold. And I remember because I didn't understand at the time, like, okay, what is these dragons? You know, what are, what do they want with me? Like what's going on here? And I began to go into the Kosh again at that time and realized that at some point I also have linked to the, uh, the Dragon Council of the Ming Dynasty and all of these um, different energies of this white dragon and these dragon councils. And, and it just began to unfold. And one thing I like to say about a spiritual awakening or even a plant medicine journey is that once you say yes, right? And once you are willing to accept the unknown and the mystery of it all, a lot of things begin to unwind and unfold for you and you begin to make the connections because now you're in this state of receiving. And once they see in any realm, right, whether it's dragons or angels or star nations, once they know that you are ready to receive and willing to receive more synchronicities and more experiences are going to continue to happen that helps you unlock these codes that are already within you. And so it's truly you just coming into remembrance of what's already there. And so even that transformation of me going into these different energetic um, bodies of dragons is what made me understand what golden dragon light body is all about. And it's really coming in form with your own essence and being able to move with this Kundalini dragon fire within you that helps you own your sacred sensuality, that helps you own your voice and be firm in your truth and your authenticity and being a sovereign leader of service because that's what all dragon energy is about is serving humanity and serving you. And so you begin to embody these codes and wisdom and you walk your, your day-to-day -day path just as they did. Yeah, that is awesome. Wow. Yeah, that was a, <laughs> that was a big one. Yeah, it is a huge one. Um, and the gifts that it opened up for you. I, I mean, of the 25 times I've drunk, I've had three reference point experiences like what you described that have changed my life completely. Mm -hmm. Never could go back to be I'm not I, everything I'm doing right now is because of one of my very early on ayahuasca experiences. And I love gosh this idea of how they uh, came into you like woof there's this beautiful quote from andrew solomon that says when you banish the dragons you banish the heroes mm. and i have always felt like they are um misrepresented you know yeah. that exactly as you said people um, and especially in movies and TV, they're, you know, depicted as these demonic, they must be, you know, they destroyed the cities and uh, they're out to get people. And that's not my experience with the dragon energy that comes to me. It's very gentle. It's yeah. very loving. It's very aware, but definitely nobody should mess with me because this dragon has my front, my back and every side. And then yes, you will, yeah. if you want to see fierce, you'll see fierce. Exactly. Um, but I really do believe they are, are misunderstood by many heroes. And I'm so glad they're making this resurgence again and um, that you can feel them, even that they're with us right now as you and I speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, you know, it's coming through for me to share this, you know, I, I'm currently in Egypt right now. And as I've been going through this pilgrimage and exploring so much about these ancient times and practice practices and the hieroglyphics and all of these things, one thing that was so confirming for me was that when the Egyptologist was explaining how the ancient Egyptians believe that all of the souls who were good 
went to the constellation of Draco, which is the dragons, to, to rest and to dwell. And I was like, whoa, like what? But it all made so much sense that that's where they would be. And they also believe that in the constellation of Draco is where we kind of exist when, before we decide to come into our earthly bodies as well. So it's it's actually a place that they believe that we come from as well as go back to at some point in our journey. And that just made my eyes, you know, buck wide open, like, whoa, like constellation, Draco, the dragons. We're really talking about this, like looking at the hieroglyphics, but it just goes to explain that the dragons and again, this ancient wisdom been here for hundreds and thousands of years. And we are just in this surge where we are not going back to it, but we are just reawakening this energy and honoring these ancient practices and these these energies and these beings who were so active at that time are now becoming active and alive and walking with us and we're having these earthly experiences on a regular basis now and so it's actually pretty cool if you really think about it that you are you know imagine yourself walking down the street and there's like dragons flying <laughs> and there's like a Lyran over there and there's someone from Octorius. And so it's like, whoa, you really are, we're really living in this time, right? Where we mm -hmm. all have these star nation connections and we are the walking embodiment of these energies and these beings. So we truly are literally walking in this galactic realm and having these different experiences co-creating with each other. You know, that is really interesting to me because the story, the history of Lyra is that it is the Dracos who destroyed the people in the planet. Um, and they were not very nice. Uh, the Lyrans didn't have the means to protect themselves because they were just, they lived in a Garden of Eden, essentially. And they were very peaceful. They didn't have war. They didn't have machines. They didn't even think like that. Very artistic, creative, loving beings. And um, they were warned about the Dracos. The Dracos positioned themselves as though they were there to be on friendly terms. And the Lyrans were warned, but uh, they, they didn't have the means, once again, right, to get it together quick enough before this terrible genocide occurred. And so I tell that story and that piece of history because... It is very interesting to hear you talk about these beautiful dragons residing on Draco and that they may be part of the lineage of the Dracos, which are very, if you will, lizard-like, uh, dinosaur-like uh, warrior beings. And I always wonder about, um, because the Dracos are positioned a lot as not being good and often as being a dark energy that positions itself even now against earth. Um, sometimes people say when they don't like the government, for instance, oh, you know, that person is a reptilian or a Draco or something like that, or with some of the terrible crimes that happen here on earth uh, or the cabal, they say it's run by groups that originate galactically from the Dracos or the reptilians. So that's interesting, but I always wonder but is a race only one thing? That seems very complicated to me that yeah. some there's just a you know dark, negative race out for themselves, maybe. Mm -hmm. But is it possible that there's also some benevolent Dracos and, and some not selfish warrior like out to infiltrate Dracos and reptilians? Because I, I just feel like it must be. And I, I'll end it by saying that I met somebody last year at an event and he's become a friend and he actually channels the reptilians and he does beautiful work. He's really an amazing charismatic individual. And I'm always watching. There's the part of me that's involved in the part of me that's observing, you know, and especially with him just seeing, you know, what, what is my take? What is the feel I'm getting? And I never felt anything untoward with him. Um, and maybe that his people are somewhat misunderstood, actually. 
So, yeah. you know, honestly, even when I put together the Starseed report and I wrote up stuff about the reptilians or the Dracos, I didn't just put it out what I thought was party line. I sent it to him and said, because I know you channel them, I would like you to weigh in. And, and he said, this stuff isn't true, but I'll tell you what is. And so I thought that's beautiful. I'd rather hear it from the star seed. Yeah. <clears throat> so you just added another point, Antonia, when you're saying that they're in Egypt, looking at these hieroglyphs and someone is connecting this to the dragons and connecting that to them residing on the Dracos, and perhaps we've all gone through that system at one point. And I find that really something to think about, like something to ponder as another point that maybe yes. it's just not all dark and bad. Yeah. You know, I think it would be negligence on our part yeah. if we did think everything was only one dynamic or one polarity. And I feel like that's why a lot of these things, like these events that we're doing are happening so we can share alignment and light, but also bring in the balance, right? And so for a lot of time, you know, we, we, we hear about the dark ages and the dark times and the lower frequency of earth. And, and we now hear that we're going to the light earth and 5D earth and all of these different terms and experiences, but what truly is important and again would be negligence if we only feel like one should resonate at, at a time, whereas it's all about the balance of the both, right? Because if you think about it from a human perspective, we have our shadow and we also have our light being just because we're in our sovereignty and our divinity and we are light beings and star seeds doesn't mean that we don't have moments where there's some shadow experiences or lower energy that we still may have to transmute today, right? So it's not about casting out our shadows and running away from the darkness because the darkness is where we create light. Again, here in Egypt, this is the land of ancient Kemet, the black soil, where all things begin to grow and rooted and nurture, right? Our wombs and where the portals that we come from are all in this darkness, in this space where life gets, begins to create. So the shadow aspects of ourselves can no longer be hidden where we have to actually come into balance with our shadow, with our ego, and with our light body to truly be the walking divine. So if you believe that as a human and, and that's your reality here on earth, then we have to also have that same understanding and realization to all of the other star nations and the and all of the other experiences that we too have had the light and the dark. But where we're coming to now in this lifetime and this current reality is that it's not one or the other, is that we come to balance both light and dark within ourselves, but also within the world. And that will continue to raise the frequency. And my divine partner, you know, he's a channeler as well. And he said it's called um, the platinum earth or the platinum energy or frequency because when you think about platinum the color right it's kind of like that silvery and, and dark um, metal comes together to make this shiny platinum it's not so silver and it's not so so dark with the metal right it's the balance of become this platinum energy and so that's what we're coming into and that's what truly this is all about and so we have to have that same understanding and perspective when we think about all of these other earthly and galactic experiences. 100%. Oh my God. Beautifully said. I am in the mood for a galactic experience with you. And here you are in Egypt right now. So I feel like uh, what a blessing that would be for us to receive. Antonia, I'm going to let you choose if you would rather do light language, if you'd like to do a channel language independent of one another, a, a mashup of whatever, whatever feels it would like to come through for us. And I want, I do want to make a request for an activation. 
because I experienced your financial, your wealth activation on one of your sites, and it was really profound. So I'd love a little bit more of that yummy stuff. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for, again, offering me this opportunity to share this, this energy with your community, our community. And I'm so honored to do this. And what's coming through is several things. And I'm glad you brought up wealth because again, I'm I'm staying at the old cataracts in Aswan, Egypt. And this is one of the top 10 hotels in the world. It's actually number six and it's so opulent. It's so wealthy. It's it's beyond. Okay. The the ceilings are grand. Just think this place, literally where the wing that I'm living in right now is literally called the palace, literally. And so I would love to share an ancient wealth activation from this ancient land, from this ancient hotel, from this ancient wealth codes. And we would also like to um, put an activation out there for the collective for amplifying their voice and their channel because this goes into what we were talking about earlier and standing in, in authority and being able to rightfully speak your truth. And both of those things are important, especially with using your voice and claiming your wealth because your voice, even though coming from the throat is a vocal expression, your wealth is a living expression of your truth and your spirituality and your essence and your energy. So it all is an interchangeable, um, interconnected ex experience. And so we wanna share with you this voice activation to help you open and expand your channel and your gifts so that we can all be in this sovereign leadership of truth and begin to bring the balance back into the earth. You are meant to speak your light and share your light into the world. No matter who may become uncomfortable with your truth, your inner wisdom demands to shine. It commands to shine and that there is something here for you to share with the world that is going to help activate others and bring balance into this energetic frequency that we are calling here this new heaven on earth and this new timelines that we are desiring to experience as star seeds. <laughs> Your books are meant to be sold out. Your podcasts and radio shows are meant to be number one within this world. You are meant to be on stage healing and activating and sharing transmissions, live transmissions from the wisdom that lies within you. And every time that you speak your wisdom and speak your truth, it begins to become a ripple effect that others are transformed and others begin to walk in their sovereignty and begin to speak their truth. Take a deep breath in to receive that. And knowing that your voice is meant to be heard. Your voice is meant to be shared. And when you speak, people listen. When you speak, people are changed. And when you speak, others are guided to speak and impart change. 
into the world. And now channeling these ancient, abundant, and wealth codes from this beautiful Egypt land of sacred soil, as well as the energy that I am surrounded around divine opulence, divine abundance, wealth that already is in our DNA. Our wealth is already encoded within us. And it is meant to be lived and it is meant to be expressed. Awakening the wealth that lies dormant within your body. Remembering who you are and your wealth identity. And that you are worthy to receive these multi-dimensional wealth codes of abundance that extends past this current lifetime and into your legacy. Feel this wealth moving along your body in an upward motion, making this snake-like form throughout your body. Being encoded with this dragon iridescent energy. Anchoring in this wealth. And to this timeline, pulling this wealth down from the quantum. Because you are meant to live in this abundant expression in this lifetime. Take a deep breath in and feel the awakening of your wealth that is rightfully already yours. And may you begin to share this wealth to create change, to become a philanthropist, to heal the earth so that we don't continue to experience genocide as we once did in our outer realities and planets that we truly get to change the shape, the energy, and the frequency of the earth and allow your abundance to shine through that it, you are a living embodiment of what it means to embody divine opulence and divine wealth. Thank you all for receiving. Wow. That was so, 
so beautiful. I just fell in love with you. <laughs> Thank you, sister. Thank you. Mm. It was all from the heart and all from the heart. And we thank you all for receiving. And we are here and it's time to walk in our truth, share our voice, and be a living expression of our wealth and body. I have three final questions for you. The first is, because I had stalked you before I brought you on the show, I told you that I was checking out your Instagram account. You had a few pictures that were just really like very inspiring for me. I also know from one of your pictures and from what you shared, you are with your beloved. And that is so amazing that he channels. This is not easy. I think sometimes to find, you know, someone you love and are compatible with, but that you actually do some of the same things out in the world. That's incredible. How did you find each other? How did you find each other and nurture this relationship? Oh, that is a loaded question. <laughs> Thank you for asking. <laughs> wow. Mm. You know, my my divine partner and I, if we, you know, continue to be in this spiritual realm of, you know, woo-woo, we actually spent lifetimes together before and we drifted apart. And we made a pact back then that we would find each other again in this lifetime. And I'm so grateful that we have found each other in this lifetime. And you're absolutely right. Being able to be with someone who not only understands you, supports you, and is on the same wavelength and path as you even if it shows up in a different way, whether it's movement, channeling, or um, coaching. However, we're still all doing the work and being, you know, light seeds and star seeds here. So we actually met on an app, okay? And very, you know, this lifetime type of stuff, right? And so funny enough, you know, I, I tell this story because people ask this, uh, you know, often to us, you know, how did you guys met? Because especially since we've been on this pilgrimage, we on the pilgrimage is about 18 of us total. And when they asked, oh, like, how long have you guys been together? And we're like, oh, yeah, seven months. And they're like, what? We feel like you guys been together since you were like 17 or 14 years. Like, what do you mean? And we're like, yeah, seven months, right? And what I found is that when you truly are finding your divine counterpart, that energetically, it feels like a lifetime because you have experienced lifetime together. And when you do meet, it's like this quantum leap as well when you're jumping into this relationship because um, you're also merging these two powerful energies. And so... You can only imagine what happens when this surge of energy comes together. It's just this, you know, burst of like jumping timelines. And it's a constant like loop to where we're having to realize, whoa, like our current reality is struggling to keep up, you know, the things around us sometimes. But yeah, we met on the app and ironically enough, I, I got on this app because one of my mentors challenged me and I'm a person like if you challenge me to something, I'm going to do it even if I don't want to do it because I'm not a go on the app type person. And I was like, I'm just really not into that. She was like, oh, you just deserve it. It's your time. You know, all of that. And you got, you know, and all of my, you know, friends or sisters or, or other beings, you know, in my life that are channelers as well. They're like, your partner's around the corner and da 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 da, da. And I'm like, oh yeah, whatever. You know, I know they're coming, but whatever. And I had this saying that I would say, I would know he's the person for me if he comes in, you know, to my doorstep. And I'm like, okay, now that's a little bit, you know, delusional. You got to meet the man. You got to go out there in the world. Like, how do you think he's going to come to your doorstep, Tony? And I'm like, I'm telling you, I just feel it. It's this inner knowing that I have that he's going to come to my doorstep, right? And it's such as, I have to share this story because it's like, yes, share the whole story. So anyway, we're on this, I'm on this app and I told myself, okay, I'm going to give it three months, right? 
I did it three months. I deleted the app because I was like, uh, this is so like, not it. <laughs> and I went to Bali last year. And so I was like, you know, I'm going to have this eat, pray, love moment. So let me download the app again. <laughs> my favorite movie, by the way. So mm -hmm. I download this app again, you know, trying to have my eat, pray moment in Bali. And that didn't really happen, but I forgot to delete it when I came back to the States. And that's when we like matched on this app and we probably shared maybe one or two words, like nothing deep at all. And time passed. And I, I want to say it was maybe like December or something. This was October when we first matched. Maybe it was December or January. And so he messaged me this, this crazy message and we laugh at it to this day. And he's like, yeah, you ever seen someone's profile and everything is great. And then you look at it and then there's this one thing that's wrong. And then you're like, absolutely not. And I'm like, that's a weird question to ask, but I think I understand what you're saying, but okay. So what is it about my profile? <laughs> that's the one thing, right? And he's like, well, that's the thing. There's nothing there. Like mm. you don't have this one thing. There's no like mm. red flags and all of this stuff. And so long story short, at that same time, um, I also was like, well, you know, I really was supposed to delete this app when I came back from Bali. I didn't do it. And I'm not feeling called to stay on this app. However, I do feel like there's something here. Like I just felt it. And I'm like, I don't know what it is. I haven't really, you know, discovered it, but I'm going to give you my number and you can do what you will, but I'm deleting the app. I gave him my number deleted the app, girl. I didn't even wait to see if he read the message. That's how like detached I was from the trauma of like going through the dating app and the dating scene. And I was like, I'm done with this. Give him my number. If he gets it, great. If he does, whatever. So he messaged me and it's literally been magic ever since. And so it's been seven months going on eight months and we've just been in this ascension you know, in initiation portal of being in this sacred union. And it's been so beautiful, again, to receive someone that has this understanding. And what I love deeply about my partner is that, you know, he's been doing and on this path since he was like nine years old, when he was first introduced to higher consciousness. So when he met and I was like, yeah, I channel light language. Cause I was in my truth. I was honest about who I was. And he was like, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know who you are. Oh, okay, that's cool. And I was like, like, it's just so easy. It was just so simple. And so, yeah, it's just been this beautiful emergent of energies coming together that is very powerful. And I'm just so grateful to truly be able to experience it in this lifetime, mm -hmm. because especially as a spiritual being and as a woman, you know, we often find that relationships are hard, but it's also harder when you are living in your truth. And a lot of people don't have an understanding of what you do and who you are, and they want to keep you small and they don't want you to share your gifts because it's in the, you know, it's something that they don't understand. And so to meet someone and have someone that fully understands without you even having to explain it, it's like home. Is, so he's in Egypt with you right now? Yes, he is. That's so beautiful. And do you guys ever channel together? You know, we never like sat down and like really did a- Well, you have like to. Trend. You have to. Yeah. I want to film it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, since we've been here, everybody was like, okay, we have to get this on film. Like, <laughs> what do I have to do to help you with content? Like, so many people are just so, you know, because, and I'm not saying it's just because it's me, it's just literally what's been, you know, reflected back to us. But the energy is just really potent and it truly is a sacred union. And I think we also are coming into this energy where sacred unions are are on the rise and we have to be examples of what sacred unions look like and because there are some energies out there that that isn't in support of sacred union because when they are understanding of what's going to happen to this earth right if we are in sacred union and we're all living our truth and on our path 
there's, you know, some energies out there that, that probably doesn't like that or want that to happen, but it's here and we're living in it. And, and we are, you know, like you said, experiencing Egypt together. So we're having these deep remembrances and, you know, just to be able to do something like this with a partner and we're not here for healing. Like this isn't a healing retreat or anything. We are, we've already done the work. So we're in giving. So we're giving back to the land but in, in, in return of giving back to the land. We're receiving so much from being here. Yeah. yeah. And you are living a hero's gamos. Have you heard that word? I have not. Oh, you have to look it up now. You heard it here and I'm going to leave you on a cliffhanger, but you and your divine beloved are living a hero's gamos, which is, it's very specific about sacred union. And I think its inception comes from Mary Magdalene, the Temple of Isis and Egypt. So it's powerful. Ooh. Yes. And I know, my darling, you and I are both speaking at the Lyran Conference. For those who are interested, it's online. It's October 5th, one day only, Saturday, October 5th, online from 8 a.m. Pacific to 5 p.m. Pacific. And if you guys are interested, go to portal to ascension.org, click on L-Y-R-A-N, Liran Conference. Do you know what you're talking about there, Antonia? Um, I do not. So this is going to, as, as a as presently, I'm going to say, no, I don't. But I feel like after this trip, because I, I return back to the States on October 1st, and so I feel like there's so much more here for me to receive as well mm -hmm. um, that may even have something to do with what I'm sharing. Um, mm -hmm. So I I'm excited about what's going to come through. And um, I have not sat with it or even pondered, you know, deeply on it. But I'm definitely going to sit with the Council of Lyra Lyran and, and channel what wants to come through. And mm -hmm. so excited to to share share it all. Yeah. Wow. I can't wait. Well, somebody who, who identifies strongly as a lioness, as a lion being, um, I can't wait. I really can't wait. This is like my conference. I'm. It's not my conference. It's Neil and Flo's conference, but they have yes. so beautifully invited me to MC as the lion ambassador and also to speak. And I plan to do some shamanic healing, some lion lineage healing for everybody uh, during that day when I speak and also share some very interesting pieces about Lyra. And mm, I'll be hitting on some of the things we talked about earlier, things that I don't know that people think about when they also identify strongly with Lyra. But I also want to say for folks who say, no, I don't think I was a lion being. Just to be clear, we are a grand experiment here on Earth, and we had five seed races that donated their genetic materials to us, and one of them are the highlight beings of Lyra. So you actually even have the genetics in you as a human. We are all hybrids. Yes. So please come and join us, portaltoascension.org, one day only, October 5th. And Antonia, this is Dare to Dream. What do you next dare to dream? Future dreams or goals? Future dreams and goals. Wow. I dare to dream that I can continue to be a living vessel and an example of what divinity feels and looks like and truly be a sacred service leader, offerings that are truly aligning people with their highest timeline and bringing them to, to the divinity and will of it. Meaning you are in this abyss of surrendering to divine will. So therefore your purpose and your mission gets to shine. And that's truly something I dare to dream. And I know because I am to a 8-8 Lionsgate portal baby that these dreams are too going to manifest into reality. Are you saying you were born on August 8th? I, I yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my dog's birthday. No way. Yes. And I, that is infinite abundance. And yes. it's, 
I could say so much about it, but, but yeah, she's also eight, eight and she was born in 2015. So she's actually eight, eight, eight. That is like super uber powerful. And I love that you work with people on, on these things like wealth and like, yes, you came in yeah. a, a, a portal to bring these things in. This makes so much sense, woman. Yes. So people who <laughs> want to find out more about you, Antonia M, what does the M stand for? Marie. My middle initial. Beautiful. So Antonia or money. M or money. All right. We'll take <laughs> Antonia money. Lawrence. Yes. Yeah. Antonia M Lawrence.com anywhere else they can find you anything else they should know. Yeah. So they can also find me on Instagram, same name, Antonia M Lawrence. And I'm actually uh, coming out and launching a few programs here in the next few months. One is going to be about helping people open their channel and activate their voice. And I'm so excited about that because again, opening your channel and your voice is so powerful because you begin to channel your business practices and your offerings and, and you know what you're here to do in this lifetime and channel things that you should be experiencing. So channeling can really connect you truly to the divine and, and to God consciousness and all of these higher realms. And it's a beautiful experience when you're able to anchor into, into that. So I'm excited about that program launching in a couple of months. And then also I have another one that's called Divine Indulgence, where you are truly being in the opulence of wealth and, and indulging in a sacred way with embodying your sensuality, your wealth, being a channel, and truly being a priestess of magic, mystery, and alchemy. Thank yeah. you so much for coming on the show today. Amazing experience. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And I end today's show with this quote from Shun Aryu Suzuki. We should not be just a fan of dragons. We should always be the dragon, the dragon himself or herself. Then we will not be afraid of any dragon. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger. If you want to help out the show, leave a comment, like, and subscribe. It helps other people who would love to hear this conversation find the show. Next week on the program, I'm featuring a Mayan native elder, Elizabeth Arahu. She talks about the Mayan prophecies and the Pleiadian prophets who have guided the Mayans since the beginning of time. Thank you so much for joining us today on Dare to Dream. Don't just dare. Actually, create all your dreams into your reality.